Welcome to Troggy Trog's Let's Play Dungeons and Dragons Online. We're doing a quest called Valak's Mausoleum. Uh, it's narrated by Gary Gygax. And this girl here is our NPC, the dead girl. And this is the quest entrance. We're going to go in on the hardest difficulty, which is Elite. My character is level 23, which is 15 levels above this quest level. But I just wanted to kind of show you what the quest is about and for you guys to be able to hear Gary Gygax's voice. So here we go. Now I'm going to bring up my hot bars and you're going to get blown away by all my hot bars here for a second. Bam. Okay, so we're going to do our buffs. And then I'll turn the hot bars off because I really don't need to use them for this quest. Um, normally I'd like to have them up because it's nice to be able to kick cast all this stuff if you need it. I'm mainly going to be using my burst, my aura, and my turn undead for this quest. Um, this is a stone skin spell. Nothing major, but anyway. Um, as you can see I have my cursor here, but I do play with a gamepad and a mouse. I don't usually use the keyboard, so let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see the action a little bit closer. But I wanted to do it this way so that I wouldn't have anything interfering the too much. The tomb is heavy with the stench of death. Okay. Much more than a recently built place like this ought to be. So basically what we can do is just gather all these guys up. And then hit them with turn on dead and I'll vaporize them. These purple bags are collectibles, you know, you pick them up and basically they uh, they go, they store in your uh, collectible bags. Usually a quest like this, they're funerary tokens. This here is a uh, maze uh, that has three levers you have to pull to get out of it. Um, two, three switches, basically. Thank you. 
Okay, so we uh, got through the door, and then there's a hallway with a bunch of traps. I won't be able to disarm them, so we just have to deal with it. And yes, I just I just took a bunch of damage, but this guy is level 23. It's a bunch of damage for him is <laughs> normally a lot more than that. Toward the center of the room. Now this voice is not Gary Gygax. There, there are two narrators for this quest. Uh, Gary Gygax does some of it, you know, about half of it, and then there's another guy that does the rest of it. And I have feather fall on, which is like a uh, permanent feather fall. Um, used to be really, uh, really hard to get those at low level, but the game has gotten a lot easier to, to find items like that. You can actually craft items with feather fall on them now. Not too difficult to do that. Should be all the bad guys. Those two valves I pulled earlier up there on the catwalk um, were for these two uh, runes that we needed to open. If you go this way, it's a shrine. Normally, this is a time quest, and so normally no one really goes up here unless they have to. They absolutely need. To use a shrine, then they'll go up there. Yeah, this quest has a 30 minute timer. It starts as soon as you enter the quest. So, ideally, if you're doing this with a party, uh, you would wait for everybody to gather at the door on the outside, then enter. Because otherwise, you might get an uh, uh, incomplete quest if you. Uh, you know, if you enter in at different times and you needed the party, you know, the complete party dynamic to succeed in getting through this quest at level. The door is slammed shut in front of you. A trap has been sprung. That was Gary Gygax again. Basically, those two guys spawn. As soon as you get down to that door, then you have to go back up there, kill him, and then go back down the door. Now, when you get to this room, it's kind of an underwater lair. Um, as you can see, there's a door across from us with two runes. We need to go down into the water to get to those. Um, I won't need the aura, but I'll cast it anyway. But the aura will basically heal me as when I'm underwater, so I don't drown. You know, basically, if I take damage from drowning. Um, the R will just restore the health, but I probably won't have that <laughs> problem at this level. There's a secret door here, and it has a shrine just in case you need an extra shrine. It's three shrines in the quest now. It's pretty uh, destructive uh, turn undead at this level, especially. There are some epic level quests where turn undead does a considerable amount of damage, or not so much damage, I guess, but just vaporizes epic opponents. Uh, I think it's the Madstone Crater. It works pretty well in. Um, so if you ever make a cleric and you get the right gear. You'll you be the guy that everybody wants to run with scraping. from that stone crater farming. There is something underneath the ground. Let me see the 
chest here. Not a whole lot in that. I never re-roll loot because it costs actual shards, and that's just silly. Something fell out of that one. There's a bag there. I'm gonna spin that bag. See, I don't have the uh, all the hot bar stuff on my screen, so normally I'd be able to tell what that was. But I'm just picking the stuff up. I don't really care what it is. I'm just grabbing it. see uh, I don't know if you saw that but at the top of the screen there the the runes are lit now so basically one of the mistakes a lot of people do is they make the first left when they come out of here you have to go all the way around because you're obviously going to this door the one that you needed to open by getting the runes now the runes are lit so you know which door it is okay and this is a kind of a double tiered kind of room to left and right guys that get closer. Turn undead is kind of an AoE effect, so if they're out of range, they won't be turned. So, and let things get gathered up, and then once all the trash has been gathered up, then you turn it. Also, you'll notice that generally I'm, although I didn't do it I think initially at the beginning of the quest, generally I break all the break rules before I pull levers. Because often the break rules will break by the spawning of the monsters. And if that happens, you don't get credit for the break rules being broken. Um, at least I think that's how the rules still work. So if you're trying to get all the XP bonuses for getting you know, the most breakables, and the most secret doors found, and the most traps disarmed, and all that sort of thing, you want to break all the break rules first. And sometimes you need throwing weapons to do that, because if you get too close, some of the breakables, uh, they'll all break. Um, certain quests are like that. Actually, some of the Delirious quests are like that. Um, so you have to use like throwing weapons or range attacks. But that's only if you're, you know, wanting that extra 5% of XP. <laughs> and sometimes it's just not worth it. You know, the time rate to XP ratio is just not worth it if you're, uh, if you want to have fun. You know, sometimes it's not so much fun to go do that. <laughs> yeah, because it's a lot of work. That noise you just heard is, you know, I achieved one of the tiers in the XP report. Basically, it was probably a Slayer type of thing, you know. They have, very, they have like a... A conquest kind of slayer report. There's guys still down here. Um, so I think this quest there's 130 mobs you have to kill, like total. I think including the boss. So if you hit that number, then you get the conquest bonus, or pretty close to that number, I guess. By the way, this is water, and it's about like knee deep, ankle deep. So, uh, as you can see, it's really slow to move in the water. So I generally try to jump rather than run in it. It's pretty much one of the things you learn pretty quick in the game is jump through water or jump on top of water, basically, instead of like actually swimming, just faster.
Okay, so let's see the runes are open now. This is the last door. These two or three guys here are methods, and you cannot turn them, so I just use Vanish. And that usually gets rid of them. Methods will sometimes respawn, so you gotta be aware that sometimes that'll work, and sometimes it'll get rid of one, and then there'll be another one that spawns in place of one of them dying. A plaque at the foot of the coffin spells the name Valak. There's Gary Gygax again. There's a collectible over here. We'll grab that real quick. And go ahead and throw a blade barrier up. The door and... shuts behind you as a decrepit corpse clambers out of its grave. That one has risen. I think Valak rose and then died. Yeah, that's him radiating right there. And then to end the quest, you pick up the spell book, which is this here. As you hold the book, you can feel the power emanating from it. The darkness makes your skin crawl. This book is an implement of pure evil. Pure evil. And <laughs> anyway, uh get some loot, and then you finish out of the quest. And that's it. Uh, to get your reward, I'll go ahead and pull this up, because I don't know how to do it otherwise. So we'll hit, hit the finish out button. And to get your reward, you just recall, talk to the dead girl, which is, you give her, give her the spell book, or don't give her the spell book. You have a choice, I believe. So I'll do that real quick. She is. So I'll pick uh, this one because I'm a cleric. This book is vile. It's nothing for a young girl like you to be playing with. As a matter of fact, I will destroy it right now. You get your reward, which in this quest is nothing. Normally you'd get a, a window with a reward. Uh, if you just choose to destroy the book, you don't get a reward. If you give her the book, she'll give you a gemstone. So. I'll go ahead and reset the quest. You can kind of read through it and pause it if you like to read all that. And that's it. So that's uh, Valix Mausoleum. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, that had some of Gary Gygax's narration in there, but I think some of the other Dolores quests have a little bit more in there. Um, most of the narration is pretty limited. Uh, some quests have more and some quests have less. But uh, There's also a Dave Arneson um, yeah, there's a Dave Arneson one, and before I'll go, I'll show you the Gary Gygax Memorial. Actually, it's right over here. Thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll do some more Let's Play Dungeons & Dragons Online, or DDO, uh, in the future. But I just wanted to show you guys just an example of Gary Gygax's voice and his narration in one of these quests. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys later.